Welcome back to Frost Education. This is Dad. Today we're going to be talking about CBAT. That's the ticker. Goes for Dalian C Back Power Co. Limited. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow. Subscribe and leave notifications on. And let's jump right into this one. So CBAT, I'm going to cover first a little bit off a description on who they are, what they do, some of the recent developments, and then moving on towards technical analysis. So um, some of this first starting with is going to be a little bit generic. So in terms of events and presentation, there was no information there, but we're going to be covering a little bit as much as we can uh, on who they are based on some of the news and SEC filings that we can uncover. So the about a section this covers here. CBAC Energy Technology Inc., founded in August 2001, is a global leading high tech enterprise engaged in research and development, manufacture and sale of high power lithium batteries. Our products include ba includes battery in aluminum shells, polymer batteries, cylinder batteries, and so on. And the applications of our product and solution uh, cover such a very, uh, sorry, sorry cover such areas as light electrical vehicles, electric vehicles, electric buses, energy sources, uh, sorry, energy storage, backup power supply, and electric toils. Now, uh, a little bit of an issue there, sorry, my bad, is that this, the sentence structure is a little bit off as half of the word goes from the next line. But anyway, uh, in 2014, CBAK moved to headquarters in Dalian. And so we're going to move on. So major projects here. Um, they're the leading and the leading organization in research and development and manufacture of lithium ion battery. CBIC has assumed six scientific and technical projects of national 863 plans and more than 30 projects of the province. Municipalities, among which more than 10 projects are industrialized. Industrialized. In 2008, scientific and technical projects in national 863 plants assumed uh, CBAC successfully developed by the single battery, uh, etc. etc. So that's a little bit older news in 2008. They have battery cells, they're working with electrical vehicle parts, especially in batteries. So we already kind of know a lot of this stuff, and you probably have seen it. So I'm going to skip towards the juicy stuff. So, on the 25th of January, CBAC Energy partners with uh, Shenzhou Raja to jointly develop battery swapping projects and UPS project. And a little bit of details towards this is that Raj John New Energy Automotive Technology has partnered with them as a part of the agreement of the two parties plan to jointly develop a battery swapping project for food delivery and logistics industry, as well as uninterruptedly power supplies. Project for traffic lights, both parties will utilize their respective competitive advantage uh, in their establishment of a long-term strategic cooperative relationships. Raja is the first Chinese producer of light electrical trucks commonly used in logistics and distribution industry. In 2008, Raja added to its product line electrical vehicles used in the trash collection industry, uh, also known as refuse trucks. Today, Raja has operations in seven Chinese cities and sold over 5,000 electric trucks and established over 3500 electric charging stations that is really bullish and just a quick thing here is that raja and provide ladder with high quality lithium ion batteries in the first year of the project the demand of the batteries is expected to reach 1 million next c back up oh, my bad c back um, this is by the way back in 11th of january c back partners with gac Mo motors to jointly develop new battery cells and this one is a leading, uh, so CBAC, we already know they're a leading lithium manufacturer. Um, and Jack Motors and, and Hugh, uh, I can't even pronounce this, but I'm not going to attempt to, for joint product development. JC Motors is a Chinese state-owned automobile and commercial vehicle manufacturer. They're found in, founded in 1964. JC Motors is among the top four domestic Chinese vehicle brands, has a research and development team of 5,000 people, and is focused on producing energy-saving, environmental-friendly, safe, smart, web-enabled, and comfortable vehicles. As a pioneer in China's alternative energy vehicle industry, GAC Motor currently provides an expansive electrical vehicle product line encompassing SUVs, sedans, and other passenger vehicles. It owns a world-class battery cooling technology and its sole producer of such technology in China. By the end of 2019, GAC Motors has exported over 640,000 vehicles to the international market. Another really massive bullish one here for, for this. Next. CBAC Energy announces the closing of 42, sorry, 49.2 million in terms of the direct offering. 
Again, this is actually really bullish because they do raise enough capital to pay off a lot of their debts. Literally, they say right here, the net proceeds from the offering will be used for general corporate and working capital purposes, including the repayment of some of the outstanding debts. We'll go through their debts level in a second. And now some of the SEC filings. So in terms of the SEC filings, we get to see uh, the net proceeds of offerings, uh, the direct registering of offering for around $70 million and 783 per share, uh, exercising off warrants, and you get to see there is a bit of dilutions happening here, but again, they are very bullish. All these, by the way, were related to offering raises or offering exercising or warrants. Next. CBAC Energy announces the production capacity expansion in anticipation of increasing client orders. That was back in uh, 3rd of February. And basically here, just a quick line I'm going to read. The company expects to achieve such capacity, well, the total capacity of 8 gigawatts per year. Um, and they're, gonna, they're planning to reach such uh, capacity expansion through two phases of construction phase one is to be completed by the end of 2022 uh, to reach an annual production capacity of two gigawatts per hour or, or gwh and phase two is to complete it by 2023 and to reach six others so the total will be eight and so that is bullish there uh, as of february 3rd 2021 the company is on track with its phase one construction and also is designing its phase two construction as a part of its phase one construction the company plans to invest uh, rmb of 70 million dollars to develop a production line with annual capacity of 0.7 uh, gigawatts per hour for its new model 32140 batteries which is expected to be put in operations in the second half of 2021 to produce 50,000 models, uh, sorry, 50,000 model 32140 batteries per day. So we covered that. There's also a bit more additional regarding their other anticipation uh, of different models, etc., including the annual capacity of 100,000 for 26650 batteries. Next, we're looking at CBA AK Energy Signs agreement with bus manufacturing seeing growing revenue from ev market that was on the fifth uh and this one here the the manufacturer is called sishun uh i can't pronounce this for the life of me but there's 10.5 million electric buses to uh sishun whatever their name is I'm, i apologize from the bottom of my heart i'm really bad at names and they're founded in 2003. They will supply with 30 sets of battery system in 12 months. Uh, details regarding the unit price, delivering time frame, billing period, and final transaction will be fulfilled by and subject to following orders from uh, Sishun uh, Goong. So that is extremely bullish. We expected to get more about this. Next, CBAK Energy partners with Shingo Raja to join. Oh, we already covered this one for uh, their vehicles and the UPS. Um, so we kind of covered this one and then next one of them actually did not cover properly is their developments recent developments and SEC filing they do go ahead and talk about the impacts of 2019 here uh, and basically talking about the spread of COVID even then uh, the revenue grew by 4.6 million dollars um, or 26% for the nine months ended September 30th 2020 that was compared to the same period as 2019 the gross Profit grew by 1.5 million or 694% compared for the first nine months, uh, same period last year in 2019. Uh, and they also had their trial, uh, sorry, trade accounts and bill receivable increased by 10.9 million or 136.8% of September 30th, 2020. So that's all bullish. Next is development of the new battery models. Uh, their current primary offering consists of model. 26650 lithium cells which accounts for 55 percent of their sales in 2020 model uh they can be that model can be used in light electrical vehicles ev electrical tools energy storage uninterruptible power supply and other high power applications their model 32140 is uh that's the large size cylindrical tablet batteries and they're that's uh still in development and they're expected to start production in the second half of 2021 Launch of light electrical vehicle business, and that was on September 24th, 2020. Um, and they entered into framework investment agreement with uh, Jang Su, I can't even pronounce that one, but go on, uh, under which we intend to develop light electrical vehicles projects on November 9th, 2020. They established the new energy automobile industry, Najing Daxon, to launch and develop their light 
EV business. And as of date of this current report, they're in the process of registering uh, its branch in Tianjin City uh, with seven employees and has re rented a manufacturing facility of more than 4,000 square feet. It's currently building the production line uh, for, the produce for producing electrical bicycles with an expected annual production capacity of 200,000 electrical bicycles per year. And they expect that the uh, Tianjin production line construction will be completed in the first half of 2021. And then new construction in Nanjing. Uh, bear with me, I know this is already a longer video, but there's a bit to cover on this one. The new construction in Nanjing, as previously reported, they acquired most of their operating assets, including their customers, employees. I love how they said... Uh, well, okay, I guess this is kind of broken down, but yeah, uh, they have customers, employees, patents, and technology from their former subsidiary, BAK International. And they acquired these assets in exchange for a reduction in accounts receivable from their former subsidiary that were disposable or disposed in off June 2014. It goes on in terms of the new construction itself. I did cover that in the previous uh, news uh, regarding the 8 gigawatts hours per, uh, gigawatts, uh, per hour per year. Um, that was the expansion there. Plan the solutions of CBAC Suzu, which is our subsidiary Suzu, China, CBAK. Uh, New Energy currently does not have any employees working locally since its lease expired in 2019. CBAK Suzu uh, stopped its facility located at a registered address. Some of this business has been transferred to their subsidiary in Dalian, and CBAK Suzu remains assets are temporarily stored in our facilities in Dalian. We plan to dis dissolve CBAK Suzu in 2021. I, I, I understand it's not pronounced that way, but bear with me. And I think that kind of covers everything. They have new patents there. Uh, a good amount of them. There's around nine of them. Uh, this one here is a type of electrode coating machine. Lithium batteries, patents, electrolyte, heating device, and vacuum injection system. Lithium battery cover assembly, battery cap, and lithium battery. Lithium battery, outer case, and lithium battery. A type of cylindrical lithium ion secondary battery. Positive and negative insulation protection device for lithium batteries and battery brackets. I think that covers everything we need to know. And then going on next... What I'm going to do here is just going to open up their quick financials to see how far off are they from paying off their entire debt. The market cap currently is around 627 million. And if we were to go towards their financials. In terms of their balance sheet that was going all the way back, I think, to September. You're seeing their total net debt is around 33 million and they have enough money to pay off their entire debt. And in fact, some of that offering money goes there. Price over book is highly overbought, over uh, valued, but again, this one is trading on intrinsic value with the light electronic vehicles and EV kind of industry, uh, which is a quiet of a fair average of having 27, 27 or 28 times uh, the price over book value. But the SP500 average is around uh, sitting, I believe, two to three. So we've uncovered the due diligence part now towards the technical analysis. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe and leave notifications on. It helps my channel a lot. And if you'd like to join our Discord chat server, you'll find it in the description below. It's a free chat room where they go on voice chat every now and then. We discuss different stocks during the day, um, including asking my opinion about different stocks or updates from my last videos. It's all in there. So make sure you do that. Now, in terms of the technical analysis point of view, on the one week perspective, Tennis and May is above 30 May. That's amazing. And this is a trading action zone, the two forms. So the trading action zone is currently between 718 and 515. And that is where positive reverses occur. 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, and that's bullish. ADX says, hey, we're bound for a reversal at some time sooner or later. We understand that. William Percent R is looking somewhat neutral. It's neither, it's neither uh, overbought or oversold. MACD here is attempting a negative reversal, and that's an important thing to look at all the other indicators while this is attempting a reversal. And a reversal in the MACD might just be an accumulation zone. Just keep that in mind. Momentum is looking really good here. And on a one-day perspective, here's where things get a little bit different. So you see the tennis in May and the 30 in May are almost on the same line. The trading action zone is very thin, between 768 and 737. Technically, the price point is below there right now and is barely touching the 50 SMA. So the price point is bullish until it breaks the 673 and it stays below. Now, on the ADX, it says, hey, it's a little bit sloppy. There is a potential for a trend forming. Uh, willing percent R shows it's highly oversold. Uh, MACD is very, very sloppy. And momentum shows the same thing. Uh, it's round zero. Now, on a two-hour perspective, 
things are looking a little bit as well uh, off the same trend. You get to see the 30 MA is above the 10 SMA, bad, bearish. Price point is below the 50 SMA, horrible. Uh, ADX is sloppy. MACD is going negative reversal, not even accumulation. It's gone full negative. You get to see that massive dip from 825 to almost 660. Uh, highly oversold and momentum is really negative. And I'm not trying to bash the stock at all. It just looks like it really took a hit similar to this one here. And I can expect accumulation to happen. And here's where the moving averages occur. Uh, in the moving averages, we can start understanding where things are starting to look like a little and where we can expect it to trade within. And we look at 846 in the top, 764 in the middle, and 692 in the bottom. Now, the bell on your bands between 855 and, 8 and uh, 684. We expect for them to trade within these kind of uh, bands. And so far, it didn't break that band yet. It attempted to today and bounced right back on. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slower, both are telling you be careful. There might be a little bit of a lower price point. And this is why we need to go ahead and check the Fibonacci retracement and significant supports and resistances. This one went to 11.40, all the way down from 41 cents. Significant resistance currently sits at 7.21. Whoops, we just did there. Okay, 7.21. Uh, significant support, or actually the next resistance, 9.05, 11.41, or 11.40. Significant supports, 5.91, 4.61, 3.01, and 41 cents. Coming on next, price line action. We go ahead here. Significant uh, support right now is a 7.04. Below there, you're looking at 666. Below there, you're looking at 622. Below there, you're looking at 580. And then you're looking at 494, 463, 402, 283, and 206. Significant resistances. You're looking at 869, 940, 979, and then the 1133. And now comes to the question, well... Uh, before the main big question, what I think about this one is we try to find any trends. This was the previous trend line. Unfortunately, it is almost broken today. Tomorrow will show whether it does follow through or not. And there's also an ascending triangle that I've seen a lot of people draw as well with this one. So I think that ascending triangle has been a little bit broken, but we can we can move it just a little bit and ignore that small ticker there. And we can say that this is the ascending triangle in whatever area it breaks it attempted to break into the top and it was almost successful but then it really tanked to the bottom and here's where things get interesting above the 860 and below the 687 those are critical points you wanted to break the nine bucks again and stay above the nine bucks for the bullish pattern to play through comes to the question to ed what do you think about this one trade wise this is a very hot industry they're playing with they're saying ev they're saying batteries ev there's it is a lot of different things coming in together and a lot of people are putting it into a storage stock which is imagine what this is going to do this is the next ev maybe the next neo etc and this is this is all going to go through whether they're with their stride or not the price over book is highly overvalued and it's not a discount in my books but here's the thing intrinsic value looks at a price point let's say five years from now or two years from now rather than what it is valued right now and so if you're investing you gotta with everything I've heard today, you've heard today, do you think that this has a massive chance? Now, ignore the previous history on 2017, 2018. A lot of that has been changed. Do you think with what you've heard today, this one will see multiples? I, myself, maybe a small position to leave it in and expect to lose it all just because it's almost a bet for me. But if I was to put all my investment in or 25% of my portfolio, I don't think that the risk here is worth the reward, even though you're playing high risk, massive reward, massive risks, uh, but not my cup of tea. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. Have a wonderful day.